What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. I am joined again twice in one year. Happy to have them back on to talk about their 2020 haunt season. I'm here with Dave and Jacob, the creative team behind the Pirates Cave. How's it going? It's, you know, I, I have to say, guys, this was hands down the best thing I saw this season. Um, <laughs> from, you know, and there's a lot of creative people out there, but I think just the production behind this, everything, the storytelling, to the actors and to the lighting, all you know, all the technical stuff, everything put into one was beautiful. Tell me, I mean, obviously this was not an easy task to put on. How'd you guys, how did you guys put, bring the magic to life, man? This was, this was stunning. I don't know. <laughs> um, we kind of just did it, but uh, <laughs> um, it took a lot of like time to think about it and how we were going to change it. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, we're going to do this, 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 and this. We cut, we start up with a very basic idea. We were just start, we started out thinking like, okay, we're going to do yard display. And then it expanded more and more. What if we did a project, what we did projections. And then what if we did like a whole show, like eight minutes, and then it just keeps expanding. But I uh, do you want to expand on that. Yeah. Yeah. It got more and more complex, you know, uh, Cause you know, we always enjoy immersive stuff and we think that, uh, you know, we build these rooms in our haunt that are very immersive and we make people stop in a certain room and we have a lot of effects and audio and video and actors. And, you know, we, uh, we were like, well, how do we keep that same quality with a yard display? So we just kept brainstorming about it and building. And then we'd have friends come in and, look at where we were in our planning stages and they would come up with ideas of, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's, let's put that in. And we just kept adding to it. You know, it's, it's not unlike a, a typical haunt year where we just, usually we got like one thing we want to add. And by the time we're done, there's like three things that we've mm -hmm. added and we just barely make it all together, you know, but it all comes together in the end. Yeah. yeah. It, it was honestly, uh, you know, I remember we had you guys on prior to the, uh, to the opening day and, uh, I remember just you guys talking about it, hyping it up, and I was super excited, even stoked when we got the uh, the exclusive kind of sneak preview of the event and then going to it opening night. I mean, I think just coming in and seeing the ambiance of, like, the you know, hearing the thunderstorms and the rain and everything and just getting into that, immersing into that world of, of being a pirate, man. I, I think it was something like that. I mean, we talked about this, too, of me and, and Sammy, we just love pirates, so, I mean, for people who really love pirates, like this is really going to immerse you into that story, immerse you into that world. And obviously you guys did an amazing job doing that. You really put people right in the middle of the action, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a good time, and I, I had a fun time. I mean, I, I got to, like I said, I went opening night, and then I brought my mom. My mom, actually, she was <laughs> she was actually pretty scared herself. She doesn't do well with uh, <laughs> with haunts and stuff, but you guys got her pretty good that night. Actually, so much so that after the show, like, I, I think one of the, the actors was out roaming around and, and, and you know, doing getting some scares and stuff, and, and she actually ran to her car and got in and locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the guys chased your mom down the street is that what you're saying i think she was i think what happened was he was actually focusing on someone but he was near her and she just got scared so she just ran to her car <laughs> Which I love. um th this was a really good story i mean you guys you guys told the, the the origin of how this all came together and now everybody has a, a wide understanding of of your haunt in general which i thought was an amazing idea origin stories are always uh, a fun thing to to look at and to uh, explore um obviously you guys did a phenomenal job uh, what was honestly the hardest thing leading up to opening night putting together uh i mean obviously you had projections you had lights you had the actors what was like the hardest thing out of it all Honestly, like the, sh the show was very difficult to put together, like having to get all the lighting and all that, like even like making all the projection screens, that was all very difficult. But what really was difficult, like close leading up to when we opened was getting our actors knowing what they were supposed to do, like when they were supposed to come out when and like all of that. It took a lot of coordination. Uh, I had to, we had to teach our actors over like three dress rehearsal nights um like a couple weeks before we opened like we did one yeah, and then after the first night it wasn't looking good yeah we're we like, were worried yeah <laughs> so i think that was pretty difficult because it's like they all their hangout spot was in the garage in between shows 
and they had to go out of the when they would hear a certain cue they would have to go out of the garage into the house and then into the tunnel and they would have to know when to go out so it's like they have to have this kind of extra timing for that not just like when they come out but even before that so it took a lot of time to teach them yeah the timing was tough and they had to hit a certain mark at a certain time yeah. they had to have a certain prop with them to make sure they had their hat you know, they need to make sure that at the end of the show, they need to get that body back out of the chest, yeah. put it where it needs to go, reset the the barrels, you know, and uh, it was very difficult di or different for our guys because none of these guys are drama kids, yeah. you know. They're all like sports guys or video game guys, you know, but they love being a part of the haunt. So we want to have them back. But I was I was telling Jacob Wayne and Matt, you gotta let you gotta let these guys know this is a different deal. They gotta be up for it, you know. And mm -hmm. and uh, they definitely rose to the occasion. Like I said, we were very worried after the first dress rehearsal. But the more and more they got into it, they they started hitting their marks and their timing was excellent. And then they started adding their own take on it. And then uh, towards the end, after they got everything dialed in, they they just started cruising out in the street, and it was hard to get them back into the tunnel for the yeah. for the next show, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it like like our actors either hated us or loved us at the end of the season. Like some of them, like we don't never want to do this again. Like <laughs> last year was so much easier, just scaring inside like a corner and like waiting until people come in. But yeah, it's it was definitely a piece of work for them. It's funny you mentioned that, like, you know, a lot of the kids were not, like, drama kids or anything. I mean, they honestly, they could have fooled me. They did an amazing job bringing these characters in this story to life, and, and I really enjoyed it. And, I, and like I said, I went opening night, and then I went, I think, that Saturday, too. And it was, uh, every show that I went to, it was just awesome. I, I actually stayed around and watched, like, two or three of the shows, because I, I actually never got tired of it. Like, it was just one of those things that you can keep watching and just, just keep there's may there may be something you missed the first time you watched it and then you catch it the second time you watched it you know and you know there's so many there's so many things to look at you know there's you got the you got the projection going telling the story which by the way that uh that whole projection of the video edited so well it looks so amazing um you know you had different clips from all these different films and stuff but it, it really felt original it really did it, and i like that a lot uh, it really you know, tied into your guys' story, and it really felt like it was something original you guys made yourselves as far as, like, filming everything and all that. So I really <laughs> I really dug that a ton. Um, and just, you know, your actors as well, bringing this story to life as the, the video was playing. It was like you have the video and you can watch it, but then you're seeing a live theater performance between um, all your actors, which I thought was amazing. And just telling this whole story, like, it really immersed me and got me more involved as to what the Pirates Cave is, which I really dug. Really yeah, a lot of people were saying it had a very good rewatch value. Like you could like you're like, oh, I saw something over there. I have to rewatch it because I missed it. And a lot of people like watched it multiple times because they thought they missed something or just because they thought it was so good. And I just think the the outcry was so great this year. Yeah, and we even had a lot of people just hanging out across the street, you know, the, sitting on our neighbor's wall. And it seemed like there were people there hanging out for you know a half hour at a time just watching the show over and over again just taking it all in that was kind of neat to see that right i really like also i had to bring this up the the uh the water effects you guys use in this show too that was uh some of one of my favorite things because i remember the first time watching it i didn't expect it and it was just it kind of got me really good um and I, I thought it was a really like that further immerses you into this story of when you know explosions go off water effects go off so it really puts you in the in the in the, the shoes and the in the kind of the view of a pirate which i really liked um overall though i mean i think this was just a stunning uh stunning performance i mean uh by opening night i, I think from what I saw, it just looked great, uh, and I and I got to see it, like I said, multiple times, and I never, never ever got bored or tired of this. This was just something that, like I said, you can watch over and over again and just, mm -hmm. like, catch something new every time, which I loved. Um, overall, though, you guys were rec receiving a ton of great, great uh, feedback. Uh, well, how do you guys feel about that? That must feel awesome after all this hard work you guys put in and to get this kind of great feedback from everyone. How do you guys feel about that? Well, over six nights, we had 2,500 people, right? Yeah. 2,500 mm -hmm. people make it out. And then probably an additional 400 just across the street if people didn't want to stand in line. So there was like a close to 3,000 people yeah. that just showed up over six nights. It was just incredible. Because last year, we had around 1,500 over five nights. Mm -hmm. So it's really a – that was an upgrade. 
but I think that's mainly because a lot of the bigger haunts are shut down this year, but that only helped us because we just got our name out more. Like you said, it was the year of the home haunts on the last podcast we did with you. Well, yeah. you did a lot of social media networking too and yes, advertising yeah. more so than every year before, you know, and I think that really helped out a lot as well. And it was, it was a great feedback, you know, cause we were worried. We we're like, you know, shoot, we've never written a story before or tried to do some kind of stage show, you know, are people going to be into this for seven and a half minutes long, you know? And so uh, we kept having other friends watch it and go, Hey, is it too long? Should we cut more stuff out? Did it hold your interest? And everybody was like, yeah, it held my interest. And it's like, you never fully believe those people because yeah. they're your friends, you know, and you, you worry that they're going to, uh, hesitate to give you negative feedback but then as it started rolling in from everybody else who weren't our friends you know or, or weren't c close to us you know it was just confirming that you know i think we did it right because we were looking at this we've been looking at that project for like three or two months and we didn't we had no clue of what was like good or not because we were just like okay we had to fix this and fix this but like we couldn't see it out of our own eyes we couldn't see what other people saw so, yeah, we had lost objectivity at that yeah. point. We we're just like, we need to get this thing done, man. Uh, my favorite piece of feedback was we had uh, a guy working at one of these high-end haunts. I won't say which one it was, but in Orange County, these are very expensive ones. He came to see it, and he was just blown away. He couldn't stop talking about how great the haunt was. And at the same time, he was denigrating his very expensive haunt that everybody <laughs> was going to. He says, don't even go to mine, man. I'm going to tell everybody to go to yours because <laughs> ours is so bad and yours is so awesome. And that meant a lot because that's a guy at a real high-end professional haunt, an right. actor, and he loved everything about what we were doing. And that, that was my favorite piece of feedback yeah. that i received that's awesome that, that i mean that, when you have someone in a high up one come up to you and tell you i'm gonna tell everyone to not go to mine to come to yours like that's <laughs> awesome that, that, yeah. that, that is funny right there too that's so i love that so much <laughs> it's coming up fast uh another thing i liked what you guys did this season too is you actually uh uh you got you guys did nights where you just had lights on and you know you had the actors roaming around which i thought was cool also i liked the uh the interactivity with uh, the uh, skeleton in the in the chest too, as well. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. I got to see a couple. I didn't get to see it in person, but I saw a lot of clips of that, and I thought it was just a brilliant idea for for something for potentially in the future. If if we ever have to go down this road again, you know, hopefully not. But if if this road yeah. ever does come down, you guys have that, and I thought that was such a brilliant idea. What did that come about? Like I, I know you guys are always uh, uh you always came out as like you know. A family-friendly haunt, but you always recommend the ages of 13 and over to go through the, the maze. But you guys had always did that first hour for family, which I thought is a brilliant idea. What what came to mind with with the whole interactivity with the the skeleton? Um, really, the whole lights on thing came like last minute. Like I think it was like the week leading up to our f opening night, and I was thinking like, well, we have all the stuff set up. We have lights on the tower. It's like, why don't we just make like a separate sequence and just add some ambient audio in there and just make like a weekday program where people can just drive by and see the lights. And even though it was last minute, people stay, still came by and like really enjoyed it. We had our actors out a couple nights and we had people come out and we had the skeleton in the chest for the kids, which was really good. That was a lot of fun. And I think we announced that like two days prior and we had a line going down like a house, like, like a house length and mm -hmm. we just announced it like two days before and people were coming from like all over the place to come and see it which is crazy and it was just yeah there's always yeah. been a good response from the parents with little kids you know we we recommend our hunt for 10 years on up and probably we should adjust it to maybe like eight years on up but as a dad who's you know brought my kid up taking him out to different uh halloween things and you want him to experience you know uh, fun family friendly stuff you know it's always been important to continue that and and to provide that from our haunt mm -hmm. so you know previous years we would just have kind of a lights on in our walkthrough haunt and we'd have one of our neighbors tell them okay now here's where the octopus comes out of the water and you get sprayed with water at this point you know and this skeleton pops out of this box you know and he would kind of explain what happens but it was mostly just a very tame 
lit up walkthrough, you know, and uh, this show is so complex. We didn't really want to begin thinking about that until we knew it was good as gold and dialed in. So it was about two or three days before we're like, yeah, we got to make this kids thing happen, you know? So I was like, let's, uh, let's take our skeleton in the chest and put a microphone phone through them and I can talk through them through the garage and interact with the kids. And it was a lot of fun. You know, so I definitely want to do that again next year if possible. But yeah, we were like, we were never really satisfied with the show. We always saw something we needed to change. Like opening weekend, we had to like, oh, we have to tune down the audio. So it like, we couldn't just like say, okay, this is when we're going to do the kids thing. We're like, okay, wait, we might have to change some stuff this week. So we can't really do it. But like, we were never really happy with the show. So we, once we came to a point where we were kind of happy with like, okay, let's do the kids thing. And people still showed up like two days after we announced it, which is like crazy. And people were like questioning, like, are you sure you want to do this kids thing? I mean, yeah. with all the other stuff you got going, you know, because we were tweaking that show even on November 1st. We were still yeah. <laughs> making some adjustments on it, you know, so it changed slightly each night. Now, I, I have a question for you. Obviously, uh, it sounds like a ton of hard work, dedication, blood, sweat and tears went into this. If the time ever arose again, uh, would you bring this production back uh, if you had to? Um, it would be very easy to bring back, yes, because now that we have the video and all that, it should just be we have the, it's all a matter of just putting it all back out because the whole sequence is there for us. But we want to try to do the maze again next year, definitely, right. because we want to just go back to it because this was just an alternate for this like this last year it's like right. okay we couldn't do walkthrough so let's do this but we want to go back to the walkthrough but there's a possibility of the i don't know but i could see parts of it you yeah. know coming back in, into our, our main haunt right i mean we right. always have a pretty good sized line in front of our place exactly. and it usually extends another house back so i could see the skeleton being there, you know, mm -hmm. and talking and interacting with people in line. And I could see the the DMX lights there, you know, as well. And and some kind and the video screen as well, potentially in this main area where people are waiting in line right. and, uh, and, 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 you know, scaring them and entertaining them from that uh, perspective as well. Yeah. Definitely. No, I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, another thing too, uh, also for people who are fans and got to witness this, a little Easter egg from Origins throughout the mazes, you know, that'd be so cool to see. I mean, obviously, you guys incorporated a lot of the major storyline in there, but if there's something from Origins you want to throw a little Easter egg in to just kind of as a reminisce to, to that year. I mean, I, I think this year was a, a, a very – and this goes for a lot of haunts that I went through. I mean, this is uh, this year I'm hoping this was like a one-of-a-kind one year because – you know, you got events like you guys, and another event I can uh, do an example that might be a once-in-a-lifetime thing that you maybe never get to see is uh, Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. You know, they did their whole drive-in experience, and you got to experience a whole new area of that uh, that fictional town of Midnight Falls. Um, and, of course, you guys did something uh, special that would maybe honestly be a, potentially a one-time only thing where if you didn't see it, then, you know, you, you, you're you going to miss out on it. But, I mean, there's tons of videos on YouTube, so, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people, if they really want to – get more into it they can they can check it out but i can say this right now any of those videos that you watch will do no justice to seeing it in person <laughs> that's what i was gonna say i'm like yeah. they do no justice no like justice at all <laughs> it's it's just too beautiful that and there's a lot of things you can you can look up on youtube but they never do any justice to the real thing i mean the real yeah. thing is always <laughs> to see it with your own eyes is is a whole new level of just watching a video on youtube yeah so um I, I'm super stoked, though. I, I mean, I, I hope 2021, honestly, is, is a better year for just everyone around, um, and I, and especially you guys. Now, there's something else I want to talk about that was uh, kind of a, a rough week for a lot of home haunters, which was the winds, obviously. Uh, how badly were you guys affected by that? I mean, it looks like you guys were pretty up and at them pretty quick about it, and a, a lot of home haunts were because that was like the week of Halloween. So uh, how, uh, how badly did it affect you guys, and, and how fast did you guys get everything back together? So we weren't affected that bad, which is very, we were very lucky. But um, I remember we were closing down on Sunday night and people had talked to us about like, oh, there's winds coming tomorrow. But we were just so exhausted from that weekend. We were, we were just like, like, we kind of just like moved it out of our memory, like whatever, like it's, it won't be that bad. So we took down like one of the limbs off the trees, which we thought would be fine. But we woke up 
the next morning, like all of us got woke up at like 5 a.m. because we heard the big skull on the, was on the top of our roof hanging. It, I, it fell down. And that we, we all woke up at like 5 a.m. because of that. But it was only the skull, which only got a little uh, break right here. His jaw just, but it just adds character to him. That's what we say. <laughs> um, and then the trees did break some limbs, but we it wasn't that bad. We were able to fix it in, on Tuesday, and then we were back up on Tuesday. So it only took us a day to get it all fixed. Yeah, I mean, the trees physically fell completely over. Yeah. And we had a bunch of breakage. So those are still in the garage right now. That's mm -hmm. on the list of things to fix before we put them away. Uh, and then the only other thing I can think of is we had plastic bags over our big light towers. And those were acting like sails when we woke up in the morning and they were bending way over. So it was scary. I had to get up there and take those bags off. And as soon as we took the bags off, then that was much better. So, uh, yeah, we did very, very well. We're very fortunate where the wind just kind of comes straight down our street and runs parallel to the house. And most, you know, our, our facade was all kind of parallel as well. So uh, it didn't affect the walls, didn't have to take any walls down at all. Yeah, we felt bad for Haunt's like Dreit Society because we went there the day before for a behind the scenes tour. And like we saw it on Monday, like that the whole thing was down and we were like, oh my gosh, like we feel so bad. Yeah. Like it didn't, because, yeah, we were upset that our trees got wrecked and like our skull fell down. But once we saw that, we were like, we need to have these guys get some help because it's that was it, it was just tragic we were like heartbroken yeah but I, I they got right back those. up no yeah i they 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 did a lot they like they were i think back up in like two days or a day and they they it's just crazy. worked and worked and worked and it it, it it like it shows out of the winds out of all day mother nature shows the week of halloween so it's like hey <laughs> you guys got halloween this week yeah, i don't think so anymore <laughs> um yeah but no, I do I mean, have to say, though, that it was this year was better than the previous year. Right. The previous year, we had three different days of wind. So we had to take stuff down, endure the wind, then put it back up, and then take it back down, endure the wind, then put it back up. We had to do it a third time. You know, I would rather have one big wind night like this last year right. and be prepared for it than, than deal with that again. Yeah. That's true. I'm just glad you guys weren't affected. I mean, because I know this is a, a big production to put on for you guys, and I'm glad a lot of the other home haunts as well were able to get back up on their feet uh, the week of Halloween because I know that's usually their busiest and biggest time of the year for everyone, okay. really. Um, so I'm glad everybody was able to get back up on their feet and, and, and fix repairs. Uh, but like you said with Drex Society, it, it was just – it was – their whole like walls fell down and mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember going through that and he was telling me, he's like, man, we had this planned and, and we had to repair this whole wall. And you know, we're, you know, we're lucky we got what we, we had saved and stuff, but he goes, man, we had so much planned and all this happened. I'm like, man, that, you know, that sucks. I mean, but uh, yeah, it, does. Yeah, it, it really does. But I'm hoping, uh, honestly, uh, well, I'm glad everybody was okay and everybody was uh, managed to get back up. Obviously um, you guys really saved, uh, Halloween this year, big time, and we cannot thank you. we cannot thank you enough for that with this beautiful production and and obviously the feedback is just you know it, it's the same thing you know it's, it's people are saying this was a really good show I even heard my buddy uh, John from the Hotline say that the production value on this and, and it, it felt like something you'd see at a theme park it, it was just <laughs> such like one of those shows where you can just stop real quick watch it and and just be mesmerized by it. Um, and I, I really think this was just all in all just a, a fun thing to get to know the characters more. So next year when I come back uh, and walk through the maze, like I, I'm going to be well more uh, immersed and known who, who the characters are. Like my inner pirate will probably come out at that point. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's what we tried to do is we tried to write the story around, like we said, the props in the maze. So we could next year when you walk through the maze, it's like, oh, that was that did that to that ship or – they threw the pirate in the chest and that's the skeleton in the chest talking to you. It's like it, we right, we wrote it around there. So next year you could see those Easter eggs and remember the origin story. If you went through, if you saw the show the previous year. So I think that really will help us. You'll help you immerse more into the story in the following years. Definitely. No, I'm, I'm excited, man. I can't wait till 2021. I'm hoping uh, we have a better year ahead of us. I think we're going to get through this all. Um, as long as we do our, our our parts and all this, I think I think we'll be we'll be good to come time next haunt season. I'm I'm crossing my fingers really hard on that because I want to see Pirates Cave walkthrough come back. I mean, the origins was so beautiful this year, and I loved every minute of it. And super thankful for people like you putting stuff on like that. And you guys did. I have to say this too. Uh, 
you guys did an amazing job with uh, handling social distancing and, and following COVID guidelines. It, I really felt uh, really safe going there. I mean, you, you made sure everyone wore wear masks. You guys actually had markers out uh, at the spots yeah. in the audience. You guys did a great job handling all that. And I, I think that's what a lot of people were scared about this year is how a lot of people were going to do that. And I think you guys did an amazing job uh, doing such. So thank you for keeping everyone safe as well. That's a, That was a, a, a yeah. big portion for this year. Yeah. Man. You guys did a great job on that. Um, so uh, another thing I want to talk about too is uh, I, I know that you guys had Forrest come down and guest scare act one night, right? Yes, we did. Uh huh. That sounded like fun, man. I, I got to I- experience uh, him scaring at the uh, haunted car wash this year, and I actually yeah. was there the night he was scaring. I just didn't know it was him till after I got home, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that was Forrest. Uh, tell me a little bit yeah. about uh, how that came together. I mean, that's awesome that you guys got him to come down to the haunt for for a night. Yeah, I, I've I've always I've talked to him through a couple of years now. Um, we've gotten definitely closer because I've taken pictures of him at Scary Farm with my camera. So I would talk to him then, and then he works at Disney too. So I would talk to him then also. But I just messaged. He showed up one day while we were programming the show, and I'm like, "Do you want to help us scare this year?" And he's like, "He's like, don't even say that because you already got me in." <laughs> so. Yeah, he's uh, he helped us scare Saturday night. And he was on the streets, so it was definitely really fun to have him and help uh, add more characters to the line and scare people while they were waiting in line. Definitely, I I, I really uh, like I said I didn't realize it was him till I got home that night and I saw his Instagram <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, he uh, he snarled at me. So okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that was Forrest, man. Um, that, no, that's cool. I mean, and I, and I love. All your guys as actors, man. They, they, like I said, they did a really good job bringing you into that. Um, and, and I remember earlier you were talking about it, if this was too long, if it was. I think honestly, I was leaving wanting more, and that's always a good thing, you know. You, you want your people to leave to want more, and I, and I was just like, man, I want more now. I mean, this is just so spectacular. Like, I, I want more. I want. I can't. I need more, you know. So I, I'm hoping that with, with this year, a lot of people can come back refreshed in 2021. Like, oh my God, now we get to walk through today yeah. and then be feel like what, what today is like and 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 see what's been going on with this whole um legend so I, i'm super stoked about it i mean i love the story uh by the way the guy who, who voiced over your your pirate your narrator throughout the entire story phenomenal job it reminded me so much of pirates of the caribbean <laughs> yeah he did our voice for um our skeleton in the chest too we wanted to rehire him because he did such a great job uh he does lots of other um works too he does like a projection bus that some other haunted houses and he's works for a company called night frights so yeah. he did an excellent job doing our voiceover his name we is mike mike from night from yeah. night frights yeah he did yeah. a great job and we are very pleased with that so and he gave us a really good deal so we appreciate that mike yeah. thank you yeah no he did a great job i mean so how does that work out did you guys get in a zoom call and be like listen this is what we want to do this is the plan this is the script uh what do you think can you work with that or how, how does that well, work well, out well, we, but what we did is like when we were first like uh, working with the show and like the projections and stuff and the audio, originally it was just my dad reading the script up until like maybe like three three weeks out from first night or maybe two weeks even. And we after we made sure the script was good, we showed it to lots of people and we were like, okay, this is finalized. We're going to send it to him. So we sent it to him and then he just voiced it over and we put it in the – in the video, in the, in the audio, and then we were all good, and it just sounded, it just sounded amazing when we heard it. Instead of just his raggedy voice for the yeah, <laughs> the you don't want my voice. No. <laughs> oh come on, Dave, you got a good voice too. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, good Mike. It. No. Uh, it was worth uh, paying him to do it. Oh yeah, and like I said, he gave us a great deal. He really helped us out on the on the budget. Yeah, yeah I, I really, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it it really felt like I was writing Pirates of the Caribbean again. You know, you hear that before that first drop. That's what they, it always. That's what it reminded me of right there. That one skeleton that talks to you before the first drop, um, and I really enjoyed that. But um, I, I I'm really excited for like I keep saying I'm really excited for 2021, and I can't wait for the maze to come back again this year, uh, n- next year hopefully. Um, everything. The only thing is, is like, how do we top what we did this year? It's like yeah, that's, always, like, that's we... always the hardest thing, right? How do you top? How do you top every year, man? But yes. Everybody, everybody thinks like, oh my gosh, they did this such a great job for the show. What are they going to do for next season when it's a walkthrough again? I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> like, we're like, how are we going to top that? Like, it was so crazy this year, but yeah, we're... We, you hear some of these people on these reviews saying, yeah, er- anything they do is really good. You have to see it. So now they've they've set that standard for us. 
you know, the people are just going to come out and expect, you know, this high level. So yeah, we're going to try our best each year. On oh, behalf yeah. of all those people, I can actually speak because I've been through the maze and seen the show. I think they are both phenomenal. I think no matter what you guys do, it's going to be good. Um, and especially in, in 20, um, 2019 when we first went, I, I, I just fell in love again. I think a lot of people really love that, that octopus effect. It is just a, a, such a great oh, yeah. effect. Um, my, my personal favorite, though, was obviously walking through the, uh, the, the doorway, and it opened up, and you had the, the, the ghost and then the big fire explosion right there. I, I really liked yeah. that a lot. That was a cool <laughs> effect as well. So, no, I, I think no matter what you guys do, people are going to show up. And I think since you guys gave them an origin story, people are going to show up who's, ne who, who's probably never been to the haunt. Maybe la this, this past year was their first time, so now they want to go through the maze and see the continuation of that story for new, for new fans and stuff. So um, mm. I, I think no matter what you guys do, people are going to show up and people are going to enjoy themselves because I can tell you from experience, I've, been, I've seen both, I loved both, and I'm going to keep showing up every year to, to see it again <laughs> and again. Yeah. So you wouldn't have a preference, walkthrough versus show? What would be your preference? I am a fan of, I I like I I really miss walkthroughs honestly. But the show was phenomenal. Like I I you put me in a, Dave, you put me in a tough you put me in a tough situation right there because I really like both. <laughs> but I mean I I really enjoyed I really really enjoyed the um the origins this year so much. Maybe a mix of both. Can we do that? Is <laughs> yeah. that possible? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, the waiting line can have parts sure. of the show, and, yeah. and then you get into the walkthrough, and you got the walkthrough. That'd be a good yeah. way if, if people missed Origins, get a little recap before you go into the actual walkthrough. So. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I like that. No, that's that's a good idea. Um, super good idea. You guys got any great funny stories that happened while doing this entire uh, production? I mean, there has to be something funny that happened. Okay, so the... The bungee head we made for the new prop we made for this year. So I always had the walkie talkie on me at all times. And the other one was in the garage so I could communicate with our actors. Right. And um, I was just, I, the show was going. And then the end of the show, when they all come out, yeah, of course, the guy with the head uses the head on the bungee. <laughs> and I get a call on after the, he goes back inside. I get a call on the walkie talkie because I wasn't paying attention. He's like, dude, the head fell off. <laughs> the head fell off. I'm like, what? And he's like, I was using the bungee head and it fell off and it flew and hit some guy in the shoulder. I'm like, oh gosh. So I check around and I, it's like laying on the grass. So I go pick it up and go bring it to him. But it, it was just so funny because like I did it. He, I guess he threw it, the head out, but the bungee snapped and just like, luckily it's just a volleyball. It's not anything like that would hurt anybody, but just hit somebody in the shoulder and like flew <laughs> off and was laying in the grass and I was like, and it I, was, and I think he went running in. He felt really bad about just like <laughs> bailed, you know, <laughs> it was just hilarious. He's gone. He was out of there faster than the flash right there, man. He was gone. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite funny story? Do you have another one? Well, you'd stole my, that was, my, that was my funny story, man. <laughs> and you like took it from me. Uh, I don't know if I can think of any other funny story. Well, like, okay. So another funny one was like, towards the end of the show like the like the last two nights we were open saturday oh, and yeah. sunday the chest stopped working and like it was just just it, the it, chest was working erratic yeah it wasn't like certain parts when like they were locking the guy in the chest like it would only shut halfway so our actors would like look all confused when it only get like, halfway down and we would be like all embarrassed but we luckily it didn't like the chest didn't like be like wasn't closed when they throw him in the chest because right. that's the most crucial part <laughs> but if like and we were just lucky that didn't happen is if they went out there and the chest didn't open they would just be standing there with the body like <laughs> like where do we put it <laughs> throw him on the roof you know yeah, throw him on the roof. the roof there you go just get rid of the body somehow <laughs> like and the it. last night too every, everything was kind of just going out the window you know all the actors were oh, yeah. tired of doing the same stuff for right. the sixth night so they were just changing roles, you know. So every time I'd look over, it's like, who's that playing the captain, you know? <laughs> and then another time I was talking with someone, they said, oh, I didn't know you have a girl on the show. It's like, I look over, well, I guess now we do. You know, it was one of the, <laughs> one of the actor's girlfriends that <laughs> took his role, and she was like the main <laughs> captain there on, on one episode. So I was like, what the heck? Uh, whatever, they're having a good time. Yeah, yeah. They deserve it. You it know? was awesome to see that. You got the uh the, the you do, you're doing the uh, you're taking a page of the Pirates of the Caribbean book, man. You got the uh, the red uh, the redhead captain. What's her name? Captain Red, or whatever the girl that oh, yeah. got in the Pirates of the Caribbean. There you go. That's your captain right there. 
what was really awesome to see too was our actors like it wasn't like a funny story but like over all the nights just like seeing them add to their parts right. like at the very the very first night it was that they were just working on their timing and stuff and once they got all that down they wanted we gave them fl the flexibility to add stuff to the roles so like for instance when the two pirates shoot at the audience and the air cannons go off our captain we really originally scripted to him just run back in the tunnel but after the first night he changed it up and he would point at somebody in the audience and go it was him oh, and we just thought that was really cool to see along right. with the miners like he would one of our miners when he was hitting against that wall he got that down to the dot and we were so impressed yeah. it was just like i we were very glad to see that they were excited for what they were doing and added to what their roles were yeah they had they improved them. improved yeah. kept mm -hmm. improving each and every night as opposed to getting tired of it and slacking off you know yeah. it was just fun to see that now it's always good to see uh, a lot of people especially in theater you see that a lot sometimes when you improv something it actually will uh, help benefit uh, the story even more. And I'm glad to see that uh, a lot of your actors took that advantage of that and kind of played with it a little bit. And if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, well, you know, they go on and try something else. But thankfully for you guys, it worked. And I've seen that tons and tons of times when I was in theater. You know, we, we, <laughs> you script one thing, one thing, and then next night they do something a little bit slightly different, and it works better for some people, and it doesn't. But, yeah, I mean, that's always good. Improv's always good. I have one more funny story. So um, the captain that they throw in the chest was like a spirit Halloween dummy we bought for the show specifically. So um, we had to put a cost. We had to put the coat on him and the coat on him and stuff. But he's just stuffed with like felt like with cotton or like whatever. So it was really soft and the right. clothes wouldn't like like stay on him. So we had to find different ways to make it stick to him. So at first we like clothes pinned it. But then, like, the first night, his pants were falling down. <laughs> so, like, we, I was, like, shoot, like, our, our, it's falling down. Like, then the clothespins were stabbing our actors in the hands. So we had to think of all these different things. And by the, la the second weekend, we zip-tied his waist. But, like, he's, like, I got a call on the walkie-talkie. He's, like, the guy's pants falling down still. And I, I was just, like, cracking up. I'm, like, gosh, like, what are we going to do? Like, it was just so funny because... I would get a call on the radio. The guy's pants are falling down again. <laughs> the pants have fallen down. Repeat, the pants have fallen yeah. down. <laughs> okay, so the last funny thing, or like, I'll just say, the last, I mean, the, the another funny moment was um, one of the nights, I think it was the second weekend, Friday and Saturday, there was like, we program how much fog goes out right. per to like, and then the show. And um, that Friday and Saturday, there was no wind. So we were like on Friday night, it was just like full of fog. And our <laughs> actors, like the fog machines in the tunnel that they come out of. Right. And like, we were like, oh shoot, like it's full fog. You couldn't even see like an inch in front of your face. <laughs> so our actors, when they were coming in and out, they would have to open and close the door and they would like stick their hands out and some were running into the door. And then like some of them were running like Parker would slide, one of our actors would slide out um, of the archway at the very end. He accidentally hit the wall on one of the on that Friday <laughs> night, and it was just so funny. They were like, "Dude, you need to tone down that fog machine on the walkie-talkie." They kept telling me. So I think on like Sunday night, we finally toned it down, and it was a lot better. But it was just hilarious because like they were just complaining. They were like coughing, and they're like, "We can't see anything in here." <laughs> Well, and the quick fix for that night was to cut holes in our our uh, ceiling that we had there and, and and get it to vent up and out. So that helped quite a bit. But it was uh, it was very foggy. And I think what they were doing too is they were opening the door to the house quite a bit, you know. So the house was completely full of fog too, you know. So that was driving my wife crazy. She only had like one room in the house where there was no fog, which was the the bedroom in the very back, you know. So she stayed in there the the whole time it was just hilarious because like the, i guess like the fire alarm went off at one point in the uh -oh. house because like there was so much fog and then 
the on Sunday, I mean Saturday night, we took it out and put it on the back table outside, and it went off again when it was outside, and we're like, how is that possible? Like it's literally went through the house and outside the through the backyard, and the fire alarm still went off. And we're like my gosh, like the smoke detector, it was crazy. That's it right there. Note to self: uh, next year we're taking off the batteries for the smoke detector during haunt season. <laughs> yeah, we forgot about that one. Uh, that that's hilarious. I mean. With fog, obviously, the wind is what really picks it up with the effect as far as most oh, yeah. nights. But, yeah, that, that that's funny. It just stays in one place, and your actors are like, can't see nothing. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, can't, I can't wait, gentlemen, to, uh, to see this next year. I, 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 I'm super stoked already, um, and we're only in November, so we got a whole, about a whole year ahead of us <laughs> until, <laughs> until exactly. we, we come back. But uh, rest assured, Knights of Horror uh, fully support the Pirates Cave crew, and um, – we will be there opening day. Uh, whatever you guys need from us, we'll be there. Uh, you guys have always been good to us. We're gonna we're gonna treat you like family and be good as well. So you guys, <laughs> yeah. you guys are part of the Knights of Horror family, and we love you guys. And and we we love going out to your event. Uh, twenty nineteen was a great successful year, and twenty twenty another great Wonder successful yeah. year. So I uh, truly, truly hold on. You're just, you're lagging out, Anthony. I'm lagging out in my back. Hold on. Are we back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, you're back. back. Okay. Because you guys are lagging out for a little bit. You guys sat still for a little bit. I'm like, oh, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're frozen. Uh, <laughs> all right. But I was saying uh, 2019, a great year. 2020, another phenomenal year for you guys. And 2021 and going forward is going to be even better coming. Yeah. I, I think what's going to be cool, too, is a lot of people missed a lot of walkthroughs. So 2021, mm -hmm. you guys can bring it all, bring the game back, and go full-blown. So let's scare the living hell out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But we do have something coming to our YouTube for our YouTube subscribers in the next coming months. Um, it's going to be very cool. Uh, we're going to be releasing some very uh, behind the scenes content of nice. this past year. So it's going to be coming maybe, I can't release, I can't say yet, but maybe January, All right. maybe around that time. Um, but yeah, so definitely look out on our YouTube channel where that we'll be posting that and we'll keep all of our social media pages updated with that too. That's on, yeah, the, follow us on YouTube so that you'll get a, um, indication of when, when it's available. Right. Is that on the, is that on the, is that part of the QR code right there? Um, I, yeah, the YouTube yes. channel is part of the okay. QR code. I'm going to yeah. throw the QR code up on the screen again. If you guys want to follow Pirates Cave, visit their website, check out their social media, check out their YouTube, <laughs> scan the QR code. It's on the screen right now. This Honestly, this is probably I, I need to get some of these for my business card. You know, a QR code just have everything right there. I think that's that's a genius idea right there. I love that QR code. Um, I, I I think I saw a lot of people actually interacting with it this season. Uh, when every night. Oh yeah, went. definitely. So it was very helpful. Yeah. yeah. So, um, sure. gentlemen, uh, obviously they can follow you guys everywhere with that QR code. I can't wait. I hope you guys uh, go go give some love to Pirates Cave. Any any last words you guys want to say before we log off tonight? Uh, one thing, I, if you're a fan of the Pirates Cave, we encourage you to put a review on Yelp or uh, Google Maps. Yeah. You know, that's, that's an area that hasn't gotten much exposure from us, hasn't received much feedback from our fans. So uh, that would help us out. You know, definitely. just uh, put your thoughts there. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, gentlemen, you guys did a great, another great year, another successful year, and I'm glad you guys came back. This was an appreciation podcast to show you how much we are thankful for your <laughs> your work this year and, and just the, the phenomenal uh, Pirates Cave Origins show. Obviously, I'm not the only one that thinks that. There's a ton of people out there that were writing reviews about this show. Uh, it was really good. Um, like I said, you can go see it on YouTube, but if you missed it, it, it doesn't do justice. But we highly suggest if you did miss it, go check it out on YouTube to see what Pirates Cave is all about because they do phenomenal things. They're going to keep doing phenomenal things, and I want – I want you guys to go see them next season because you're not going to want to miss it. This is I, I have a good feeling next season is going to be the comeback for everyone right here. So, yeah. um, Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this so much, uh, and thank you so much for being part of the uh, Save Halloween crew this year because you guys really stepped it up this year and did something great, and I think a lot of people would agree this was one of the greatest things we've probably seen in a long time. <laughs> We're sure glad everybody enjoyed it. It was a heck of a lot of work and very expensive to put together, but uh, <laughs> yeah, in the end, it was well worth it. Yeah, yeah thank I mean, you, everybody. Twenty-five near three thousand people. I mean, that's that is nuts. That shows you how much people 
missed Halloween stuff this year, and you guys <laughs> really kept that spirit alive. So we appreciate it. So like I said, go show Pirates Cave some love. I'm going to put that QR code right up on the screen one more time so you can go follow all their social medias, visit their website, check them out on YouTube. Donate to them as well. They do a lot of good work, so they would very much appreciate you if you donated them. But always you know, give them a follow. That's always free, and they appreciate that just as much, if not even more, because they want to interact with you guys. They want to see all the beautiful pictures you guys probably took, videos. They're always happy to see all that stuff. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the podcast. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. Follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. I'm your host, Anthony. This is the Miles Horror Podcast. My guest, Dave and Jacob from the Pirates Cave. And we will see you guys next time.